So in this visit to my garage, I decided to do something a little different. At the thrift store this last weekend, I got this Native American flute that is missing its block on the top that redirects the air that flows up through and over the, the flute hole. I don't know what you call it, but I'm going to make a block for my flute. Now, this piece of wood is a piece of cherry. It was a cherry tree that, with some scouts, actually, we were doing a service project cleaning up an elderly woman's, uh, an elderly widow woman's yard, and we took out this, a cherry tree. And this is part of the trunk there. I've had it aging, drying, whatever you want to call it, in my yard for about four years, in my backyard. So I thought I'd try a chunk of this cherry tree as, as my block. Now, I have a general idea of what I want. Um, I want to carve a, a, an eagle of sorts. <laughs> Um, I want it to be kind of an abstract, kind of Art Deco style eagle um, that is reminiscent of kind of Native American art also, but it's not intended to be a real firm depiction of things. So right now I'm just trying to clean up the piece of wood so I can start laying out what I want to what I want to carve. So to to one of the key parts of this block is a nice very flat surface that will go uh, against the top of the flute here. So I, I wanted to get this nice and planed as flat as I could and using a little hand plane was kind of what I thought I'd do. So with it flat I want to check now to make sure that the air flows fine off of it, so you'll get to hear a little bit of flute playing. And it's working just fine. So, on to the rest of shaping my little eagle. So I'm just marking out where, where the block needs to match up with the flute. Sketching it out, getting a rough idea. I mean, I say I know what I'm doing. I, what I'm doing. I have an idea, and I know what I kind of want it to look like. But as far as execution, I'm just figuring it out as I go along. And this is actually pretty typical of my process when I'm making or carving something. Part of, just like Michelangelo might say, I'm. I'm helping the eagle find its way out of this block. It's in there somewhere. I know kind of what it looks like, and I'm going to help help it find its way out. So I'm just sketching it out. That little bit that you see there that's intended to be wings. Um, the little rectangular thing on the bottom is the bottom block that's going to sit on the top of the flute. And there you can see the side profile. My son thinks it looks like a banana. But, <laughs> we'll see. Here I'm just now doing some whittling. This this part here is the tail of the eagle, kind of making a, a slope down and up for the tail feathers. Or what represents the tail feathers, because really it's a bit abstract. So now that I've got kind of the top roughed out. I'm drawing the side profiles of the shape so I can rough out that shape too. And a little off center with my camera, but you get the gist of it. So now just back to some whittling, kind of clearing out that shape. And as I proceeded to do this, shaping out the sides of the wings and the side of, of the eagle, uh, most of my lines are gone now, except for maybe the little bit around the head, which is what I'm focusing on now here. And really, to finish up this, one, I'm using my OpenL number 6 here 
for the rough carving. I really actually like carving with my open L number six. If you want an inexpensive, good little pocket knife for whittling, the open L number six is awesome. Um, you can find a lot of different open L sizes um, anywhere. The, the cost for them is typically like 10 to $20, somewhere in there. Um, now I'm using my Schrade um, splinter. This is a, a, an inexpensive carving pocket knife that has six different blades in it, or six different tools, rather. I wouldn't call some of the gouges and stuff a blade. But um, it's a great little tool. It's not the greatest steel, but for the price, again, I think it's around 20 bucks or less. I don't remember. I've had it for a while. Um, they, they work great. Um, they're fun. Uh, I often carry these in my pack when I'm on scout camps. And it, it, the, the different tools work just fine. Um, I did have to sharpen them a bit out of the box. They weren't as good as they could have been but useful tool. So now I'm just trimming off the excess um, on the bottom that won't be needed against the flute, um, and then I need to clear it out. Decided to use the chisel that I recently uh, restored, and it maybe wasn't the best idea. Uh, this, this cherry is twisting a little bit, and the use of the chisel did crack it the wood slightly, although the piece I was carving with already had a few cracks in it anyway from laying around. I, I actually think it gives it character. I could have chose a piece without, but I chose one with. And I, I, it gives it character. <laughs> I think it's just fine. I, When it comes to uh, the Native American items that I've made, I, I do have quite a bit. I do have some Native American ancestry in my, in my blood, or in, well, Native American ancestors. And uh, I do a lot of scout stuff, and I've, I've taught the Indian lore merit badge. Um, I've made quite a bit of Native American regalia. Um, <coughs> and uh, on a lot of those, it's typical to... to um, Kind of embrace the imperfections that you have and I like the imperfections and the inconsistency and the variety that comes out of different pieces. So here um, I finished carving it and I've, I'm just finishing up the sanding here. There's a little bit more to do sanding under the base. I left the under of the wings nice and rough but uh, in general this is this was basically done. I did do a little more sanding. I did take it to uh, 220 grit sandpaper before I finished it up with some Danish oil, which is also cherry Danish oil. So I guess it's got a little bit of a kind of cherry tint to, to this oil, Danish oil, for the finish. And I really like the color. This is one of my favorite parts when you're carving something, when you finally put the finish on and it brings out all the colors and textures of the wood. I think uh, this little chunk of cherry that I grabbed has some nice variety in it um, with heartwood and some core wood in, in both parts. So I, I finished this up actually just last night with the finish and then I let it I, I did a couple coats and then I let it let it sit overnight. A lot of rubbing it to get it soak in nice and good. So I left it there overnight, came back in the morning quickly before I ran off to work and finished up the last little bit. And that last little bit is cutting some leather, um, choosing a piece to just cut a nice straight little lace, really, um, of leather to tie, to tie the block to the top of the flute.
And really that, that finishes it up there. The, the flute is done, the, the block on the flute. This flute that I got for $3 at the thrift store now can be played and I'll share a little bit with you. Um, if you haven't already, like and subscribe. Um, I really enjoy doing little projects like this. This was a nice, quick, easy one that was fun in the garage and allowed me to do some carving instead of restoring tools all the time. And I'm going to play a bit for you. Again, like and subscribe. Look for opportunities to give those old things new life. And we'll see you on the next video. Ciao.